Hello and welcome to the third video in the series. So in this video we will write our first Keras style neural network. So previously we used one of the pre-built or um, pre-trained neural network and now we will write our own neural network. So if you know a bit of Keras or TensorFlow, it's fine if you don't, but uh, TensorFlow made it pretty easy to write any neural network. So um, TensorFlow through its library Keras um, just made it like single lined. So all you need to do is just type in layer.con2d or layer.maxpooling or whatever layer. So in single lines, you can type in a layer and then you bunch your layers together and that's your network. That's all you have to do for neural networks in TensorFlow. So it turns out MATLAB is similar to this and um, we can write a similar network in MATLAB as well. So to begin with, um, what I will do to show, just to show the parity, um, it's fine if you don't know Keras or TensorFlow at all, but just to show the equivalence between um, Keras and the way MATLAB or rather the way deep learning works in MATLAB, what I will do is try to um, reproduce this exact same network in um, MATLAB, just to show you the parity. Now, what will this neural network do? So what this neural network do, it will classify handwritten digits. So we will use the MNIST database. It is like one of the standard databases that came, came out in, I don't know, a long time back. And um, it's basically a bunch of digits from zero to nine. And the task is to classify um, these digits. So this is basically one of the hello worlds of deep learning kind of networks or data sets rather. And um, we will do, our network is will basically classify this data set called MNIST. Okay, so um, let me bring MATLAB over. And now last time we were writing our code directly in the command window, this time because it will have lots of lines. So we will create a live script. So let me, um, for some reason, my live script always opens in the second window. So let me get this one over here. Um, and great. So we have our live editor. Great. So this is basically, this live editor is just like Jupyter. So um, it's pretty easy to use, intuitive, and you can see what your commands are doing. So the first thing is to load a data set. And um, so I'm going to, uh, just type in um, basically tell it the path and I'm just going to copy some commands so that this video doesn't bloat over too long. Um, don't worry what these commands do, I will tell you, but um, they're not so important right now. All right, I swear these are the only two lines that I'm going to copy from my notes. Okay, and um, and I press control enter and it evaluates this line of code. All right, so what the first thing is doing, the first thing is, so if I uh, go over there, it's just storing the path to the data set. So MNIST data set is already contained in MATLAB installation. So um, it's already there. And this command uh, full file just uh, gets the path out. So it's in MATLAB root slash toolbox slash NNNet slash NN demos and so on. So this just gets the path and IMDS basically, so uh, in IMDS we store, um, so we create a data store. So when you have a data set for neural network training, you need to create a data store. Um, a data store is basically a collection of images and uh, videos or whatever. So in our case, it's a collection of images. And um, that's why we have created a data store. Um, I will make another video about data store, so I don't want to get bogged down by the details. But for now, just think of IMDS as, or this data store as just sta just storing all your MNIST images. Okay, great. So we have that loaded and um, great. So let's first display an image. Let's see what kind of images are there. So let me, um, so whenever I press control enter, it runs a section. Um, if I do Alt Enter, so let me just break. It creates a new coding area. And let me read an image. 
and I'll tell you what this function does. So what the, um, well, let me type in a bunch of commands and then show you. Great. So read image, what it does is it, um, let me make this a bit bigger so that it's easier for everyone to see. Great. So read image basically takes the data store and reads the two, the nth sample. So here I put in 2000, so it'll read the 2000th sample. Size prints out its size and um, this displays the image. So when I do control enter, okay, so here you see the size, it's 28 by 28 and it's one. Great. Awesome. So um, you see the image. It's grayscale. Um, I should have mentioned this before. Every image in, in, in this MNIST database is 28 by 28, and it's a grayscale image. So um, we have that. And um, so one annoying thing about uh, this live script is that when I press Control Enter, it just runs from the beginning. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add section breaks so that I only execute this piece of code. So now if I do control enter, it just runs this piece and I, you see one. Now if, let's say, we try the 5000th image, it's something. Because these are uh, meant to resemble handwritten digits, they can be pretty crazy. Oh, so that was a five. Um, if you see this data set, you would see that, um, so if I type in uh, the first image, it's a zero. If I type the hundredth image, it's again a zero. So the way this data store is saved in MATLAB or is there, um, all the zeros are together, then all the ones come together and all the twos come together and so on. Now, when you train a network, this is kind of bad because you would want the data set to be shuffled. So that way your network will learn appropriately. If you have your data in a sequential fashion, like zeros together and then ones together, your accuracy would be pretty low because the network would be biased towards the most recent input it trained on. So that's the reason why you always want your um, data set to be shuffled. Okay, great. So let's create another break. And um, what should we do now? So for now, what we will try to do in any machine learning application, when you train a network, the first thing you do is have a training set and a validation set. So you would want a training set and a validation set separate because you want to train your data on the training set and then you will be evaluating on the validation set to test how your network is performing. All right, so that's why you need to split or rather, we need to split our data set into training and validation. Okay, so we split into IMDS train and image data set validation. And since we are in MATLAB, everything is a command. So there's a command called split each label, which just splits your data store. So pass in the data store and say I want 60% split and I want randomization to be there. That means things at random, not the first 60 or something something like that. So, and I do control enter and boom, I've created two data stores. So which you can see on this right hand side. Okay, now that is done. Now it's time for actually designing the network. So let me create another section break. Great. As I mentioned, I would be copying the, the Keras network as it is. So first there's an input layer that takes in the image. Then there is a convolution layer. Then there's a max pooling layer and there's a convolution and then a max pooling. So I'm going to implement this thing as is. So let's go back. Okay. So I define my layer to be 
a list. So when you define, whenever you define a network, it's basically a giant list. And so first I, so there's a layer called image input layer in, oh my God. Um, yeah, this one. Right, image input layer. And we need to specify what kind of image you're passing. So we're passing 28 by 28 and a grayscale image. So remember, in the last video, we talked about channel height and width. So this represents the channel. Since it's a grayscale image, it's one. And there's another thing that we need to do, which is quite important, is the normalization. So you know what? I'm not going to do it right now so that we can see why it's important. So that's the image input layer. Then I need a convolution layer. So um, convolution layers are useful for processing data. So they, they um, find features in a 2D image or a 3D image. By 3D, I mean RGB. So um, convolution is very useful when dealing with images. I'll make a video about like what convolution does, but I hope you have some basic idea what convolution does. So the first um, input here is the filter size, and then how many filters are there, and then what kind of padding do I want. So I'm gonna just do same padding. Okay, and after that, we need to apply an activation. So ReLU activation, what it does is, it takes the maximum of um, the value that you have and zero. So if a value is negative, it discards it, makes it zero. If it's positive, it lets it pass. So that's what a ReLU layer does. And then um, we need a max pooling operation. What max pooling does is, so we specify a filter size. So basically for each two by two grid, so since the filter size is two, for each two by two grid, it takes the maximum value. So it's, so max pooling is a coarsen, coarsing operation where um, your fine grained data become coarser because for each two by two grid, you only take the max value. Okay, and then we apply these three layers again. And this time, the number of filters, let me double it to be 64. So here I'm just like arbitrary, I'm, uh, I'm actually using the numbers exactly from this Keras. You see um, 32 filters and then 64 filters. So um, great. So now we have the max pooling layer, what we need. So after this, once we have everything, we need a fully connected layer. Um, and it should have 10 outputs. Why 10? Because there are 10 classes, 10 digits, zero to nine, that's 10. And since we, um, so at a time, it can only be one digit, right? So at a time um, only, so, okay. So how a neural network predicts is at the end, you have these 10 outputs and you should get the probabilities of each number in such a fashion that the probabilities add up to one, right? Because probabilities always add up to one. So the the entry having the largest um, probability signifies what class it is or what digit it is. So to, to get the probabilities, we have to use a softmax layer. And since it's, um, uh, right. And since this is a classification layer, so let me type in classification. layer boom done and that is basically it so if you take a look at the keras one um i've used the exact same network except that i don't have the dropout layer which is not required for this simple example so we have just created our first network so let me run it and boom done we have saved our first network great in layers now we train our network so to train our network, um, before you start training, you need to specify some training options. So let me define a variable called options. And then um, I define this. Uh, so this training options object defines um, the options. Uh, what kind of training 
details that you want. So the first thing, so whenever you train a network, you need um, an optimizer, right? So an optimizer that um, finds the right weights for you. So we will use stochastic gradient descent with momentum, which is a pretty standard algorithm that you can use. So it's SGDM. Again, for any of these, if you go in detail, you can look at uh, MATLAB's documentation and figure out what these are doing. I define my initial learning rate. So you need to specify uh, you need to specify um, a learning rate to be 0 0.01. So this rate is the rate at which your gradients are updated. Then I define um, how long or how many times I want the training to be done. So this is known as epochs. So an epoch is your network going over your entire training data set once. So four epochs means it goes over your entire training data set four times. The more the better, but you need to figure out um, using the, you don't want to overtrain your network. So um, you can figure out what is the right thing by trial and error. Another thing that you need to do is shuffle so remember we mentioned that uh, we should shuffle our data set so i shuffle at every epoch and a um, couple more things that i want to add is i want to add some plots um the training progression okay that's it now again these so it looked like i just pulled them out of um my hat but if you go to the documentation so help on training options um, you can see like all these values are given here so if I go down a bit um, yeah so different max epochs mini batch size and a lot of different things all right so um, a lot of these values are I'm using the default values. So, for example, for the mini batch size, so um, you always train your data set in in batches, and I'm just using the default value, which is 128. But again, you can use this name value pair to tweak your data however you want. I'm just making a very quick and dirty example, and I um, I think I'm happy with this. All right. So now that we have our options, we train our network, and training is done by um, guess what? Another command called train network. So here you first pass in your training data set. Then you need your layers. That means your network and the options that I just gave. And then let's run it. Ooh, I got an error. Um, oh, it's called layer. So if I run it, Let's see what happens. At this point, a new training window should open up. Yeah, yeah, again, it opened up in a different window. So it's taking some time. Now the waiting game begins. Great, so here uh, the bottom graph is the loss, the top graph is the accuracy. So after four rounds of training, my accuracy is hovering around 10%. Now that is not good, right? 10% accuracy, what does that tell you? So 10% accuracy means there are 10 classes. So if I was ran randomly just predicting any um, so if I was just taking a guess I would get 10% accuracy so that means our network is not being trained at all also another thing is um, so you can see some stats over here I did not sp specify a validation data set that's why we don't get the validation accuracy um, I'd like to do that manually so that's why I didn't provide it but something's weird so let's see what's happening actually well I know what's happening so I'm just gonna tell you um, remember, we read in an image here, right? So, if I uncomment it, so again, if I just print out my image, let's do that. 
you see the values here uh, so it's so that you can see it better um, I don't know let's see okay yeah so the values that you see over here are large because it's a grayscale image the values go from 0 to 256 or 257 um, 255 sorry uh, or 255 yeah so um, so this is troublesome for our networks so neural networks typically r like values between negative 1 and 1 or 0 to 1 so they don't um, like values that are large so what we need to do is normalize our images so that the, the values lie between 0 to 1 instead of 0 to 255 there are multiple ways of doing this and the simplest possible way is to define a normalization in our image input layer so let's do that so if I define um, normalization uh, and what do I want rescale 0 1 what it does is it rescales the value between 0 and 1 boom okay I run it and then let's train our network again so here you see our accuracy is doing much much better so at the end of four epochs I could have trained more losses decreasing and my accuracy has gone up to somewhere between 90 and 100 that's really good awesome that worked out well so we have trained our network here um, great now let's come to the final aspect of testing our network so let me add another session break again I will upload this code on github and um, it will be well commented <laughs> great now um, this net object is our uh, neural network so uh, let's see uh, like okay so here I am looking at my base workspace this net object has been created so when I click on it it's a series network so the same way when we loaded in AlexNet in the first video here we have the layers and this is exactly our network so if I go into image input layer 28 by 28 and 1 all the same details that you saw so this net object is our neural network okay let's go back so um, now I want to classify my image so um, give me a moment to resize uh, okay I'll just let it be I'll um, okay great so, okay so I want to predict I want to see my the performance of my network on this on the validation data set and if you remember from last time to check the output of a neural network or to run a neural network all I need to do is use the classify command why classify because my final layer is a classification layer this is a new this is a neural network that classifies data into 0 to 9 so um, this would classify my entire validation data set and then I want to get out the labels so I do to be so I want to know the true labels labels okay so why prediction is um, what the network thinks the labels are why validation is the true labels okay and I, what should the accuracy is just basically the number of times they match divided by the total number so um, the number of times they match can be calculated by the sum of whenever they're equal and you just divide by the number of elements of um, validation all right pretty simple now if I run it uh, you should see that oh also on the right side you can see the details huh I get an error um, 
in the data store. So let's see. Let's try to debug. Hmm. Oh, ah, labels. I spell it wrong. All right. So now when I run it, you see that the accuracy is 92.7. Pretty good for a um, small network trained for just four epochs. If we train for more, or if, if it was slightly larger, maybe we could get better accuracy, but 92.75 is not too bad for our first network. All right, this concludes this video. It was pretty long, I know. And um, the next one would be short, hopefully. So I will upload the code for this video on GitHub. It will be in the description below. And see you next time. And I hope you enjoyed this one.